All right, so here we are at 3.01. This is going to be a drawing unit. We're going to start off with simple drawings, then we're going to add some math, and then we're going to add some Sokotoa to it. So just start at the beginning and work your way up. These things are called free body diagrams, and all that means is that you're going to have one object that you are describing the forces on. So we freed one object to draw a diagram about it. That's really all that fancy setup means. We're going to free one object, so we're only talking about one object and its specific forces that are acting upon it. So what are these forces? The force of normal is what you're going to see if the object is resting on something, on a table, on the ground, whatever. It's a force that acts opposite the gravity. So if gravity was just pulling straight down, this object would go through the ground all the way to the center of the Earth. But we know that doesn't happen. Why doesn't that happen? Because there's an equal and opposite force acting upward. And so this object is staying balanced in that Y direction when it's just sitting on whatever, on the ground. Okay. Now, the left and right forces in the X is friction. So you've rubbed your hands together, they get hot. That's because you're building up friction. Friction happens in the opposite direction of motion. So we tend to think of it as stuff that slows you down. Okay. Force app is force applied. And that is what the person or the experimenter is actually doing. So if we assume that the force applied is to the right, then the force of friction would be to the left. So we just talked about the direction of these arrows for right now. And for today's lesson, yes, everything will be in one of those four quadrants, north, east, south, or west. But what about the size of the arrow that also matters? So if this object is, in fact, moving to the right, it means the force of friction is smaller than the force applied, because that's how we're able to get the overall direction to the right where the force of normal is gonna be equal to the force of gravity because the object is not moving in the Y direction. It's staying right there. So the forces are equal. If gravity was more, it'd go through the ground. If gravity was less, it would float up. We know that they are equal, okay, in that Y direction. And then in the X direction, wherever you're going, where we're accelerating, that is the direction of the force. So you could have a force applied going to the east or the west. That could still happen. So when you're doing your drawings, double check that you're doing the correct size and the correct direction. That force of gravity is not 9.8. So you do need to have that little equation for later on. It's just noted here so that you have it. The force of gravity is equal to the mass times the gravity. And that's how we calculate weight. That's all weight means, mass times gravity. So if you're on a different planet, your weight is different, but your mass is the same. So here we're talking about net forces. And that's what I was talking about before. If we're going this direction and we're accelerating, we have a net force this direction. If we're going up we and we're accelerating, we have a net force up. Okay. So if there is a block on a table, and the block is being pushed five newtons to the east and one newtons to the west, which side is going to win? The five newton side is gonna win, but my answer isn't gonna be five newtons because if I picture it this way, I have one, two, three, four, five newtons pushing in one direction and one newton pushing back, then these one newtons would cancel and I'd be left with five newtons to the east. That's your resultant or net force. So in this one, we're just adding and subtracting for our net force. It's going to be to the east. Since I have a force to the east, I have an acceleration to the east. So we are accelerating to the east with a four newton net force. Magnitude, units, and direction. Yep, forces are vectors, not scalars. I showed the direction by using the arrow. There's a lot more practice with even more than two forces. So you might wanna check out the ungraded to get some help with that. 
So your quiz is mainly on drawing free body diagrams. Remember, free body, we freed one body or one object. Use a box. Don't forget your arrows. So let's do some practice. So the normal force again, which one is that? That's the one that is opposite the gravity. So gravity is always pulling down. Normal is pulling up. The force of gravity is equal and opposite to the normal force because the book isn't flying in the air or making the table collapse. Does the table also have stuff? Yep, the table has a force of gravity and the table has a force of normal. Its normal force is created by the floor. And these arrows would be the same size, but opposite directions because the net force is zero. Okay, there's no acceleration in the Y. A book is at rest on the tabletop. So the sum of the forces have to be zero. So the sum of the forces in the X is zero. The sum of the forces in the Y is zero. Is anybody pushing on the book? Nope, nobody's pushing on the book. So there is no applied force, which means there is no force of friction. So those two don't even have to be written there. So in this case, I don't even need to use the X. There are no forces even to describe. What are the two forces that I'm gonna need? Okay, well, I don't have applied and I don't have friction. What's left? Gravity and normal. Okay. Force of gravity is acting down. Force of normal acting up, and those arrows should be what? Equal and opposite. Now, I drew this on the picture, but what would it look like in the free body diagram? It would look like that on the right. Equal and opposite arrows. Label your forces. Don't just have the arrows and not say that this one's the normal force and this one's the gravity. Double checking, you have everything in the right spot there. Okay. All right, those forces balance each other out again. Okay. Balance forces means no acceleration. So technically that book could have been sliding along the table and not accelerating. And then your net force would have been zero still in the force in the X, even though it's moving. Acceleration is zero when you're at rest or moving at constant velocity. So an egg is free falling. What do we remember from free fall? Only gravity is acting upon it, okay? So only gravity, big hint right there, right? So even without talking through the rest, you probably can figure out the three free body diagram. It gives you an extra little hint, neglect air resistance. So if you didn't remember the definition of free falling, you have it right there. Is it being pushed? Is there a squirrel stealing the egg and pushing it out of the nest? No, so no force applied, no force of friction. It is free falling, okay? So just the force of gravity is acting down. Make sure you label force of gravity so I know you know which force is which. This one, the forces are unbalanced. There is no force acting upward to balance it out. So the force of gravity, is equal to mass times gravity. So we're accelerating down at 9.8. The net force is always in the direction of the acceleration. Problem three, a flying squirrel is gliding from a tree to a ground at constant velocity. What does that mean? Acceleration is zero, which means that the net force is zero. So all my arrows have to be balanced. All my arrows have to be balanced. So he's gliding from the tree to the ground. Okay, there's nobody acting on the squirrel. I'm not up there trying to push the squirrel. So no applied, no friction. So what are we gonna have? Gravity pulling down and not normal pushing up. What is gonna be pushing up? Air resistance. What are those arrows gonna look like? They're balanced because we know that it said that there was constant velocity. Now, what happens in real life is we probably don't have constant velocity, okay? The force of air resistance is gonna be less than the force of gravity. So you're gonna have a smaller arrow for the force of air 
So you're going to have a net force down. And so you're going to have an acceleration down. It's not going to equal totally 9.8. Why? Because the air resistance is going to cancel off some of that force. A rightward force is applied to a book at rest in order to move it across a desk. Consider friction. So a lot of times I always say ne neglect air resistance. A lot of times it's going to say neglect friction, but just not all the time. So you're going to have to be able to read carefully to see when it says you can ignore friction or consider. So in this case, we need to have an arrow for the friction. So what are our four forces? every time go back to those four forces when we think about it okay the book is on the desk so it's going to have gravity down and normal up those are going to be the same size why it's not bouncing it's not bouncing it's not going through the table it's not floating in the air so the force of normal and it's going to be equal and opposite the force of gravity what about the other two it says that it's going to the right. So the force applied is to the right, okay? But there is friction. Notice this is a smaller arrow for friction so that I still have a net force in the X direction that goes to the right. So if you have acceleration to the right and net force to the right, then your arrow should be bigger to the right. So read carefully. It might say push the book to the left. Read carefully, depending on which version you get. Okay. A skydiver is falling with a constant velocity. Draw a free body diagram. Okay, so if it was a constant velocity, we would have the force of gravity equal and opposite to the force of air resistance because acceleration is zero. Okay, so that is the constant velocity answer. But if we have in real life, which is the free body diagram I did, the force of gravity is going to be larger than the force of air resistance. Okay, she is still going to be falling and accelerating down, and the net force is down. Okay. And so if we have someone without a parachute, they're going to have a really small force of air resistance. If we have a parachute, we can have a bigger force of air resistance. So that's the whole thing. It's trying to balance it out so that you're going to slow the person down. Okay, so that parachute, that air resistance is going opposite gravity. And as long as you're accelerating down, you would have a larger arrow on the bottom. I think I clicked too fast. If they say it's constant velocity, then the two arrows would be the same, okay? The dogs drag a sled across a loosely packed snow with a leftward acceleration. So leftward, so the force of fly has to be going to the left here force applied to the left, okay? Force of friction is really big. Why? It's snow. So it's going to slow them down, but we're still getting an acceleration to the left. So our net forces is still going to the left because where our motion is still going that way. Gravity and normal, again, balanced each other out. So, if the two forces balance each other out, we're not going anywhere. If you have more pulling up than going down, then it would lift up, okay? On this one, notice the arrows can be all over the place. Look at the head of the arrow. Both of these are heading down and then the force of normal is heading up. So unless this guy is stronger than the normal force, it probably has no motion. And so always look at the numbers when you get to those. And that's what that ungraded one will help you out with. Okay, so what happens if we have a projectile in motion? Okay, 
So what is the net force in the X if we neglect air resistance? What do we know about the velocity in the X? Because that's what's gonna help us out. The velocity in the X is constant. So when we ignore air resistance, the velocity at the X is the same until it hits the ground. But what it started with, it ended with. So if the velocity is constant, the acceleration is zero. So the net force in the X direction is zero. So again, this is just talking about the X direction because the acceleration is in the X is zero. So our sum of the forces in the X is zero. So the ball can be moving in the X, but he's moving at constant velocity. So the net force in the X is zero. What about in the Y? Do we have acceleration going on? We do. We have gravity pulling us down. On both sides, we have gravity pulling us down. On the left side, our motion is going up and it's going slower because we have negative acceleration there. On the right side, the motion is the same direction as the acceleration, so we are going faster. So the net force in the y direction is going to be dependent on gravity, which makes sense because the acceleration is due to gravity. It's just the gravity might be acting with you or against you. Okay. So when I am throwing something, launching something, shooting something, that initial force, if I want to do the free body diagram at the very instant at time equals zero, that is when I would have a force applied. But the entire rest of this arc, there is no force applied until we touch the ground. And then we have the force applied from the ground, which you could call it a normal force. It's not exactly because um, it's not at rest on the ground, but you could still call it that. But you're only going to have the force applied there. So in the yellow area, if they give you a net a problem where you have to draw the free body diagram, the only force that acts in the yellow area is gravity because nothing's affecting gravity in the X and the Y or sorry, nothing's affecting the velocity in the X. And gravity is what's affecting the velocity in the Y. So be really careful when you are reading some of those. And there's some couple other trickier ones there where you have just somebody slowing to a stop. Okay, if you're slowing to a stop, do you have a force applied? No, if I am braking with that car, those brakes are actually my force of friction. So. I could be moving in this direction, but slowing down. And why am I slowing down? Because I have a net force in the other direction. I'm slowing down, negative acceleration. But my force of gravity and my force of normal would be equal and opposite. So in every single one of those, just try to think about what each part is. Make sure you label the forces or else I send it right back to you. I don't want that to happen. And that's all for 3.1. And in 3.2, we're going to talk more about net forces and actually doing some calculations with it. There we go. Thank you for